Should you get paid for appraising someone's coin collection? In this video, we talk about why we charge people appraisal fees for looking at their coin collection. Let's get started. Just to give you guys a little backstory on why we're creating this video today, uh, we, we were basically I uh, reached out to somebody uh, from YouTube. They commented on our video and said, "Hey, uh, could you appraise my collection?" And you know, at first I was like, "Heck yeah!" You know, let's talk on the phone. Uh, he's a great guy, and so we actually spent 15 minutes talking. And at the end, he asked, "Will you appraise my collection for free?" At first, I agreed, and then I realized it was a big mistake. Let me explain. The reason why I made a mistake when saying yes, I would do it for free. It's because I didn't know the magnitude of his collection. So uh, this guy that reached out for me to appraise his collection sent me over a hundred items for me to appraise. And you know, that's that's kind of a big thing for you to do, right? Uh, you know, your time is precious, your time is valuable. You know, we got a lot of things going on, video uh, creation, working on other people's collections, uh, buying stuff and sourcing stuff, uh, figuring out, you know, everything that we have going on with our life. So time is, a very hot commodity in anyone's life really and so needless to say I said I'm going to have to charge you for this appraisal of this coin collection here's a disclaimer before we get started I do think you should help people um, in the hobby in the space if time allots for it and we help people every day all the time it really just depends in this situation on the size like I was saying of his collection wow! <laughs> So right now, we're gonna take some time and show you how we appraise collections. So come with us. So there are four avenues for us to determine what a coin's value is. There's coin facts, price guide, gray sheet, eBay comps, and then also our kind of perspective, our understanding of the market. So right now we're gonna show you guys about all, almost all of the photos that he sent us uh, and give you guys a perspective on how we grade things but also um, how we evaluate them in terms of price. So up first we have the Mercury Dime set. Um, we can see that the 21P and the 21D are there. I kind of net graded everything to G6 slash VG8 on the whole set. There might be an outlier AU in there somewhere but overall I used um, what people would pay for my customers, which is two dollars and twenty cents per mercury dime um, And then I also added fifty dollars for each of the key day mercury dimes. He's missing the 16 D But he has um, those two mercury dimes, which are pretty nice the 21 and the 21 D He is missing also the overdates based on what we have here I would evaluate this set to be around two hundred and seventy dollars up next We have this group of eight Morgan dollars uh, we can start off with the top left. Uh, that one looks like it has been circulated around VF uh, area. We have a BU 1886 from the looks of it. Um, a 1897O that has a hole in it. We have a 19020 which looks like it's an XF. We have two BU Morgan dollars bottom left. One looks like it is scratched on the obverse. Then we have um, an AU cleaned 1889 and it looks like a VF cleaned 1891s for the BUs. I put these at 60 because that's what they're selling for currently. Um, for XFs, VFs, and lower grade, especially with the Hold Morgan, I would value those much less, around 30 to 40 dollars, depending on the coin and depending on the slight grade increase. We are back here with more Morgan dollars, 1921P, 1921D. Um, these would go for about 30 dollars each. Nothing too crazy on those. Not really a huge premium in those, especially with the, the grade that they're at. Um, I would grade one around XFAU details based on um, the wear and possible issues on the obverse. And there is uh, on the 21, it looks like it has that nice dark um, average circulation that you see on a nice original piece. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the 1922P, I do looks like it's a BU. Um, Next 22 we see is kind of XF area. Uh, two BU Morgans on the bottom, those 1923s are nice. They are the most common date, however. 23D looks like it has that XF almost AU look. 
and the 23s looks like a slider um, for most of these coins we're still sitting in that average area of 30 to 40 dollars uh, for the bu ones i would say between 45 and 50 based on who you talk to um, the 23d and the 23s are a little bit better dates so i sat on 40 dollars each for those wow and the morgan dollars and the peace dollars just keep running down the pike um, these are kind of, you know, the average, the same kind of stuff. The only thing to really sh show you in this one is a nice 25S, 35S, 35S again, and another 34D. Um, these are a bit, a little bit better of dates for the Peace Dollar Series. So these actually were around $50, $60 for each one of them based on their condition. Up next, which is the last kind of grouping of dollars that we have, the 1901S looks like AG, almost fair there. He says there's a scratch on it. I think I could see that as well. Um, I would rest around $35, $40 just because it is a better date for the series. You need that whole filler for your collection. Um, the other really thing that jumped out to me was the 90cc. Um, it has that big rim ding top left, right where it says the date on the 2x2. But overall, a decent coin. I could see that one fetching around $150. Moving on to a few more here, I have a 1921 High Relief Peace Dollar. I don't know what that green spot is on there, so I uh, included a, a problem free price and a problem price. We do see those two American Silver Eagles and that 1892 Morgan Dollar. Uh, I would see that Morgan Dollar fetching $75. It looks like it has been messed with based on the luster on the cheek. Um, so that is something that I included in the price with that 75 uh, for the two BU ASCs, nothing crazy about the dates, so I sell those for around $32 a pop. Taking a look at the V-Nickels, uh, nothing too crazy here, no key dates, um, very circulated coins, and I just don't see a lot of value here. We got a lot more photos here, Mercury Dimes, AUBU type of state. Um, you know, nothing that I would say would be super dramatic in terms of its value. You know, a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. Um, 43 looks a little nice, looks like it's a BU coin, 42 as well. You probably could get five or six bucks for those two. Um, and the rest are kind of around uh, the melt area. We got some interesting Jefferson nickels here. Um, you know, something that pops out to me is just, you know, the difference in contrast with the proofs and the circulated coins. Sadly, there's not much uh, value here. Um, we got, you know, probably 25 cents per each coin. Uh, and there is some melt value aspect to that war nickel top left. And there's a few more in uh, the top and the top right. So maybe he can get a little bit more out of this. Up next, we do have a 1909, 1909 VDB and another 1909 VDB. Um, sadly, these have been pretty much you know, circulated to the point of, you know, not, not too crazy in terms of value. I would value these about six to $8 each. Um, nothing too crazy. So let's pull up exactly what the sheet looks like. Um, basically we have the coin type image and uh, the grain projection. And then we also have the estimated value. No, these are not complete yet. I'm still working on the whole set, um, but there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of things for me to learn from and a lot of things for you to understand in terms of how to set everything up. And um, I don't know, it's kind of a good thing for you to send kind of in a knit pocket little thing for your customer. Once everything was said and done, we valued the collection at around $2,300. There was a total of 88 line items for us to look at. Um, the Morgan dollars were a great start, but towards the end, there wasn't much value, sadly. But overall, it was a great experience. So after taking all this into account, how long did it take us to document all the stuff? Um, basically, it took us about three hours. We quoted him for two, um, but we had to do additional research on the baseball cards and other things like that so $33 an hour isn't too bad um, but once you understand how long that you actually spend every day researching understanding how to grade coins understanding the market um, and also being able to use those four things I talked to you about um, $33 an hour is something that you should be paid uh, when looking at bigger collections and the reason being is your skills are valuable and your time is important. So ultimately we ended up charging him $100 for two hours of our time, which was the original quote. Um, and the reason why we charged him $50 an hour is because that's kind of the general standard, or at least the beginning of a general standard 
um, for many of the coin shops that are out there. You know, people start charging $50, $100, $150 for kind of those bigger collections and the more higher echelon coins. Um, and so that's kind of where we base ourselves off of in terms of the knowledge that we possess and the, the, uh, the time that we want to bring to a certain project like this one. We feel this is an important skill um, that many people don't have a grasp on completely yet. Um, and I think that um, as time progresses, just like how we've been talking about Blackstone and other things, um, it's going to be a valuable um, knowledge and skill that you have throughout the years of numismatics and for other collectibles in general. So I advise you guys to uh, study, um, understand the market more, and um, also help people out when you can because there's a lot of people out there that want to understand what their collection's worth and someone uh, is going to get paid for that. We hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts down below. Would you take money from somebody to help appraise a large collection? Um, and subscribe if you're new because we're coming out with videos every single week. And we have great coins up on our website at AkushaCollectibles.com. But without further ado, I will see you in the next video.